Smarties, here we are. 300 episodes. Unbelievable. Today, we welcome fellow educational therapist and our director of operations, Katrina Gonzalez, to celebrate our 300th episode. In this episode, Katrina interviews us about our experiences with and on the podcast. We share some behind the scenes stuff that we've never talked about before. Favorite episodes, what we love and think about each other. Stuff made me cry. How things have shifted since we started the podcast and what we are most proud of with the podcast. We would love to invite you to celebrate this major milestone with us. And here are nine ways you can celebrate with us. The first is you can share your favorite episode on Instagram. Tag us at Learn Smarter Podcast so we can see it. You can give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. We love those. You can join our email list on our website, www.learnsmarterpodcast.com. You can email us at Rachel and Steph at LearnSmarterPodcast.com about an episode idea you have. You can tell a friend. If you've been thinking about wanting to do an on-air coaching call, hit us up. Let us know. You can invite us to speak. We have loved the opportunity to do all the speaking that we have done as a result of the podcast, and we would love to do more of it. You can email us privately, Rachel and Steph at LearnSmarterPodcast.com, just to say hi. That means a lot to us. Finally, you can sign up for a phone call at www.myedtherapist.com com or www.capedtherapy.com so we can help get you the support you deserve. And I know that I said there were nine ways, but I forgot about a 10th way, which is you can go and support the work that we do here on our podcast by becoming a patron through our Patreon. That's www.patreon.com slash learn smarter podcast. For $5 a month, you can support the work that we do. And as a thank you, we post behind the scenes things that we don't share anywhere else. And you can hear are all the extended conversations that we've had with our fabulous guests over the last 300 episodes of podcasting. Thank you for celebrating with us. Thank you for being here. Let's dig in. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. Hi, Smarties. Welcome to episode 300 of Learn Smarter, the educational therapy podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. And I'm Rachel Cap. And 300. 300. I had to like take a second. Wow, 300. And today we are celebrating this milestone with a special guest, Katrina, who you may or may not know, is an educational therapist on both our teams and also is the woman behind... All the things of this podcast, all the things in our practices. She's the one that gets it to your ears. How about that? Yes. She and Pierce get it to your ears. So we are so happy to have her come on. Gets it to your ears. She gets it to your inbox. Yeah. She gets you onboarded as clients in our practices. She gets you scheduled for coffee dates and lunch dates for us. And she's an educational therapist, so she sees clients as well. Yep. I get it done. You get it done. I do. Welcome. Thank you. So Katrina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you both so much for having me. This is super exciting for me, having been a listener and a behind the scenes person on the team for, it is officially five years. Unbelievable. Is it really? This month, actually, February of 2019 is when I started helping out with all of the things for both of you. And I just love you both so much. I'm sorry. I want to hear how much you love us, but I have to be pretty. <laughs> pretty, come on. You go, you go up. I can't handle the barking. Privileges revoked. Yeah. It's amazing to me that this has been five years now that I've been working behind the scenes for you. You're the podcast producer. You really are. Is that really my title? That's exciting. It is. That's what you do. You should put that on your LinkedIn. I'm adding that to my LinkedIn and my resume later today. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you don't need a resume. (laughs) What's happening? That resume better not go anywhere. I'm never leaving. I told you, you're both stuck with me. That's it. (laughs) But no, it's been such a privilege to have seen how this podcast and both of your practices have evolved over the years. And I've learned so much from you both. So just thank you. I feel really honored to be part of an episode, like an actual episode now, instead of just doing the (laughs) writing pieces and the behind the scenes stuff. So thanks for having me. Well, they need to hear your voice. 
there's Katrina in all of her glory. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and we should say Katrina came on full time. Yes. In August of 2023. Yes. Which was the greatest decision for all of us because it provided us with what we needed, which is more of you. Mm-hmm. And it provided you with what you needed and wanted, which is more flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. It was an easy decision for me. Good. I'm so much happier. (laughs) I'm so glad. And now you have time to see clients. And that is... Something we've been trying to figure out for years. Yeah. Yeah. You just didn't have time, but now you do. Yeah. That's been huge. Because, yeah, I mean, I finished school in December of 2019 and then COVID and, and all of that. So it's been, you know, a journey, but we're here. It's very exciting. So I thank you both for this opportunity and... It's been so fun so far. I wouldn't change a thing. Good. That's what we wanted to hear because we need you to stay forever. <laughs> I told you you're stuck with me. Yeah. So I'm curious, how have you seen the podcast evolve from your perspective behind the scenes? Oh, boy. I feel like when I first started five years ago, we were covering a lot of the basics, you know, teaching people what ed therapy is, different aspects of the work that it is that we do. And now it's been so exciting to see you venture into the different aspects of like the business side. Mm. I think having that new business practices series is really exciting, especially for people like me or people just getting started wondering what ed therapy is all about and all the things it takes behind the scenes to make it happen. Seeing the different guests that you've had come on has been so exciting. There's been some really wonderful conversations over the years. and. I'm just so excited to see where it's going to go. I agree. I'm so proud of you both. (laughs) First of all, thank you. We'll hand the reins of the episode over to you because you're here to celebrate 300 episodes with us and five years of podcasting. It's amazing. Okay. I get to be in charge. This is exciting. You tell us what to do a lot, let's be honest. (laughs) You think you're in charge, but really not. Katrina told me to. (laughs) Katrina told me we had to, X, Y, Z. Oh, so I get to take the blame for everything too. That's fun. Okay, so let's get started. 300, I can't believe it's been that many episodes. So here we go. I hope you're ready to reflect and think back on all of the different fabulous episodes that you've done. I wanted to ask you both if you were to get a glimpse of what the podcast is today, back when you started, what would surprise you the most? I think how easy it's become and the effect that it's had for both of us to do things on camera, to do speaking engagements, how much speaking experience we now have. I think that's really true for you, Steph, too. You've been doing on-camera stuff for a really long time, and I don't think that was your initial comfort. Oh, for sure. Even just, I mean, and I've said this before, I think, but even just saying the opening intro, yeah, I had to read it word for word. I mean, now it's memorized, so I don't actually look, and it's one sentence, but that initial sentence was so hard for me. You used to have it, like, written out word for word, right? And to read it every time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The very first time we recorded it in Palm Springs when we were on CEO weekend, whatever. Yeah. Boss lady weekend, we called it. And I remember just, ooh, that sentence was rough for whatever reason, just in my own head. It was just anxiety provoking. So I think, yes, all of that has gotten easier. I just am me on the podcast and I don't think as much about what I'm saying and trying to be exactly what I think everyone only wants to hear. Like I'm being me and that wasn't initially how I felt. But if I'm going to say what surprised me the most is some of the speakers that we've been able to have and having Peg Dawson and having Sally Shaywitz, Thomas Brown, Ellen Bratton, who's now become a friend of ours. Like yeah, just crazy. The- <laughs> Just those things and the amount that I have learned and I hear myself quoting them from those conversations Mm -hmm. is incredible to me. Those are invaluable and 
I'm so grateful to them from all that I've been able to learn from them and for them taking the time to come on this podcast. And, you know, who were we? We were just, you know, two ed therapists that... We didn't have guests for 50 episodes because maybe on some level, like, we felt we needed to earn it. We needed to earn that and that audience to have these big time people in the field come and, you know, like we get to talk to them before we hit record. Yeah. And we get to talk to them after and someone like Ellen Bratton, like that we text with her, <laughs> yeah, exactly. even though she doesn't like <laughs> texting or like we're social media friends with her is yeah. really unexpected. And every time someone says yes, I still am excited the way I was when Thomas Brown said yes. I think he was our first guest. Yeah. He was episode 50. We'll link all these episodes in the show notes too. Even opportunities to talk to someone like Rishi. Yes. Sri Ram, who just the loveliest. Came a favorite, right? Total favorite. We've re-aired those episodes several times. Oh, yeah. He's so lovely. And you just reached out to him because of... An article he'd written. Uh And we learned so much from him. I share those episodes all the time of what he shared. And so I wasn't expecting that to happen. And remember, you used to write word for word on the Google Doc what you were going to say in each episode. (laughs) Yep. And now we write like a couple sentences and we go, oh, that's enough. (laughs) Yeah, we're good. (laughs) <laughs> is that good for an episode? And then we talk about Below Deck for five minutes. and <laughs> Yeah, it's no longer a full-on script. It's no longer word for word written out. So you've come such a long way. Okay, well, that ties into my next question, which is along the same lines. What are you most proud of with the podcast? We've put an episode out every week for five years. Yeah, I'm really proud of that too. When we started podcasting, we did get advice from people It's not easy to podcast and it's not easy to be consistent with a podcast. And so we did get advice from people that, you know, if you're going to do this, you got to commit. And most people don't make it past 10 episodes of a podcast because it is a lot. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud that we have podcasted through me planning a wedding, through a pandemic, We've podcasted through two pregnancies for me without ever missing an episode. And that's a testament to both Steph and I, but also the team behind us that was like you and Pierce being on board with the amount of batch recording that we were doing to make that happen. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud to say we've never missed a week of the podcast. No, yeah, we've never missed a week. And we're coming up on, in May, it'll be six years. So 300 episodes in six years. I was going to say, I wasn't here from the very beginning. You guys were already going when I hopped on board. But yeah, that's something to be extremely proud of. Yeah, because you took over all those things that I was doing that... Yeah, yeah, you were doing it for a step. Now I'm doing all the little... Yeah. All the fun stuff. I mean, there was a time where we were listening to all the episodes back before we were publishing them. And now <laughs> there's such an inherent trust between us and you and us and Pierce. Like, we know Pierce has it. And we know that you have it. Yeah. So... It's a well-oiled machine now. It is. We've got it. Love the workflow, guys. Love the workflow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll ask each of you, we'll start with you, Steph. What's an episode comes to mind when you think of all-time favorites? Wow. I know you mentioned a few, you know, we did some name dropping earlier, but maybe it's not a guest episode. Maybe it's... No, it's probably the episode with Peg Dawson. I would say it's probably one of my top favorite episodes just because there was a lot of persistence to get her to come on. And I felt like that was such a win Gold directed persistence. With your help. I remember all the emails. <laughs> the courting. <laughs> we had to court her, yeah. Yes, we did. I would say that one. That's a great one. I love that one too. Rach, how about you? Favorite that comes to mind? Yeah, couple. Since Steph did a guest speaker on the podcast, I'll do one that we recorded. And I'm just thinking about the ones that like, When I'm doing these client calls, when the calls are coming into the practice and you can sign up for a phone call at either of our websites, www.capedtherapy.com or www.myedtherapist.com. The ones that I tend to share a lot 
our early episodes, which I always am like, we were new to podcasting. I know what episode she's going to say. So episode 10 is one we did on ADHD and executive functioning. And then I share our writing episodes on executive functioning a lot as well, which I think are like 19, 20 and 21. Those make parents feel understood and make learners feel understood. And the adult learners in particular get very emotional over those episodes. And then the other ones that come to mind are client success stories. Mm. It is incredibly gratifying for both of us to hear learners that we have this very close relationship with come on the podcast and talk about their experience and share and be vulnerable. It's not easy what we're asking people to do when we ask them to come on the podcast. Absolutely not. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever asked a client to come on that hasn't been willing to talk about it. And maybe we change their names and maybe we, you know, do some things to sort of help their privacy. But I know the clients that I brought on, like they share these episodes on their social media. And I think it's incredible that they are willing to be vulnerable in that way and talk about challenges and document their own growth. I think it's incredible for our audience to hear other learners who may be At the beginning stages, like sometimes I'll just be like, just listen to this episode. Just listen to this. And on a personal level, I know about Steph's clients and she knows about my clients. And so I like getting to meet her clients. So I love when we get to do those episodes. I'm always thinking about more ways to get our clients on the podcast. And it's a good reward, just FYI. They're like, we earned it, you know? Yeah. Well, and what a testament that is to the work that you've done with these clients and the relationships that you've built and the confidence that you've been able to foster, that they feel empowered enough to be comfortable sharing their stories. And like you said, be vulnerable, share all of the different stages of the journey and recognize that it's still an ongoing journey. I love hearing those client stories. Those are some of my favorite. I thought you were going to say calendaring. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, obviously that goes without saying. I love a good calendaring episode. We just did Rachel's big executive functioning, executive functioning skills problem, which FYI, we're loving the shared email, everybody. It's working out well. We're loving the updated calendars. It's working, but I love a good calendaring moment. Those are some good ones too. Absolutely. (laughs) Okay. Keeping it on a fun note, how about share one fun fact about yourself (laughs) that the podcast listeners may not know or haven't learned about you yet in all of the years of recording? Oh, I wonder if we should say it about each other. Oh, that might be fun. Okay. 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 Sounds like you may have had something, Steph, that came top of mind. Oh, (laughs) Rachel, I need to share this. I want to share something about Steph that I don't know if people know about. I'm not sure if we've talked about it on the podcast or not, but Steph has started a YouTube channel. (laughs) And Steph, can you share whatever the title of the YouTube channel is? It's called Gluten-Free Adventures. Because that's something that's evolved over the course of the podcast. You went gluten-free. It's not like a by choice. It's by allergy. Yeah, you're not being trendy. Yeah, no. I, boy, I wish I could eat it. <laughs> when you get glutened, as you call it, it's like we got to cancel the podcast. Like things shut down. It's awful. My whole body shuts down. Yeah. I mean, I tease you about it, but that is not something you would have been comfortable doing, being on camera, showing your face on camera without all this experience of recording. So that's my fun fact about you. Mm. Go follow her on YouTube. We're going to all check it out now. I love it. We are working on getting the podcast up on YouTube, by the way. It's just, we have a lot of projects. Hello. I've been putting those episodes up faithfully every week now for the last few months. We're up to like 20. Katrina's putting them up. The goal is eventually on camera. I didn't know that. That's brand new information. No. Yes, you did. We talked about it. That's new information. That's new information. This is exactly what happened last time we talked about it. (laughs) This is why it's new information again, because that whole thing. So eventually, maybe we'll see. That sounds like a problem for future stuff to solve. Not right now. Let's calendar it for future months. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So one thing about Rach. I'm nervous, just so you know. 
I think the thing that I'm going to go with, because I've got some like fun ones, but I think the thing that I'm going to go with is what I don't think that you guys know about Rach is how deeply she cares about her people and her clients. And she feels deeply. And I don't think that people realize that sometimes in your life, those of us that know you know that, but you will go to bat for the people that you care most about. And it is so admirable the way that if I need you, you're there. And I needed you last week and you were there. That's the biggest thing that I think everyone should know is just she cares. She cares a lot. But let me follow up with a fun fact. Okay, good, because you made me cry. That was really nice. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> read your read tear up, too. <laughs> Real quickly, I just have to say I absolutely agree with you, Steph. And that's something we love so much about you, Rich. Thank you, guys. For sure. Okay, so fun fact. I'm going to go with food fun fact. <laughs> is it about what happens when it rains? <laughs> what we get, what we eat. That's she gets I'm Chinese talking. food. <laughs> Here's the fun fact. I could tell you most of the foods that Rachel loves. <laughs> I'll do a list. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cucumbers. I love cucumbers. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> popcorn. Love me some popcorn. The cheddary kettle corn, caramel. <laughs> Chips. Chips. Yes. McDonald's french fries. <sighs> So good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could go on, but I just. <laughs> I'm a savory, salty person. So the reason why I brought this up in my phone, I put emojis next to people's <laughs> names because it just makes me smile. Whatever emoji makes me think of them is what I put in my phone between their first name and their last name. And she couldn't just have one <laughs> is really where this is coming from. So I settled on cucumbers and French fries. Yeah. And maybe that's because there's not a popcorn emoji. Maybe they need to make one. How is there not a popcorn emoji? Is there really not? Really not? That's surprising to me. There's not. There's not. Like, you guys, sometimes, like, I'll bring her Disneyland popcorn. And oh, it's <laughs> my favorite. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, listen, I have it all the time. I love it too. Steph, there is a popcorn emoji. There is? Oh, so maybe when I did it, there wasn't one. Okay, I'm sending it to you. Getting added today, you know. Yeah. Cucumbers might get knocked off. Oh. I don't know about that, but. <laughs> Definitely not French fries. <laughs> no, French fries, fries got to be there. <laughs> Elliot loves them too. On the way to school the other day, he goes, Mommy, I want French fries. I'm like, Me too. <laughs> First of all, I love McDonald's french fries, but they have gluten on them, so I can't eat them. So I have to live vicariously through you. Remember when I sent you their free today or whatever? Yeah. On Instagram. And then you basically said, like, I need a reason to go get those. <laughs> That's happening, obviously. But that was me vicariously like, oh, yeah, if I could have them, I would. <laughs> She'll go. I've got no impulse control. I'm like so persuaded by the mere power of suggestion. Well, and sometimes you tell me it's my fault. Remember when you went and got Slurpees? Oh. <laughs> you were like, this is your fault. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was talking about it. <laughs> I do love California Chicken Cafe, too. Let's be honest. I eat roughage as well. Bring it back to where it all started. Exactly. We're just talking about, like, fun snacks. But what I love is the idea that when I text you and you're driving, you probably have me in your phone as Rachel Cap, right? You don't have my other last name? No, I do not. You're right. So it's like, Rachel Cap, cucumber, french fries. <laughs> like, <Yes. laughs> and you know this because now you have... A car that has CarPlay. <laughs> love her so much. I had to drive the old car and I was like, what kind of plebe drives this car? <laughs> like, <laughs> Back with the peasants. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Because you didn't have Bluetooth. I know. What I was dealing with, I shouldn't have to live like that. She served you well. Yeah, she did. I was with her for like 13 years and we're keeping her. Longest relationship. It's the longest <laughs> yeah. relationship, yes. <laughs> All right, let's anyway, move on. Let's move, move on. on. Okay. Well, thank you for those fun facts, guys. <laughs> All right, let's bring it back to a little more of a serious note. Thinking about your time as an educator, what are some overall shifts you've seen with the challenges that learners are facing? This is an interesting question because 
I don't know if it shifts or if we've just realized. We knew online portals were a problem, but what we have come to realize about them is so impactful. I think through COVID, parents seeing what was going on was a real shift in understanding. And I think not necessarily the shift, but sort of the consistency of the issues that at least in my practice, because we have specialized over the course of this podcast, the pain points are the same. The arguments that families are having in their homes are the same. The challenges that families are having are the same and predictable. There's such an opportunity to do more. And so for me, I don't know if it's a shift, but more of like one of the things that I love about the podcast, it makes me think about what I think and what I think has sort of like really gotten specific as a result of all this work that we've done, all these hours we put in. Steph, what would you say? I was going to say this is aging myself, but coming from a time where we didn't really have technology and we were just starting to use email. You're going back. Yeah, because a lot of times I compare what the student is going through to my own experience. And it is such a difference. Everything is in so many different places and it's so many different things going on that in order to keep track, it wasn't the same when I was in school. And although some things are much easier, there's a lot of things that are much harder. And I think that's the biggest shift. I mean, obviously, COVID shifted a lot. It will forever have shifted a lot of things. But I think that's like the obvious answer. So I was thinking about me as a student and what I had to do and go through and use. It was just so different. And most parents are experiencing that same thing. It's just so different from what we went through that it's hard to understand. One of my college students She had a midterm yesterday, and it was nowhere in her portal. Hmm. She knew about it because she listened in class and whatnot, but I didn't know about it. And I did a deep dive into her portal, and it was nowhere. And that is a perfect example of everything else is in there, but the midterm was not. So you can't rely on those things. That's huge. I think that's a wonderful point. And So much has changed in that regard. Yeah. All right. Looking forward now, what do each of you hope for the future of the podcast? How long do we think we're going to be doing this, guys? Rachel's asked me this before. I've only asked, it's more the thought experiment of it. I wasn't asking in terms of like, hey, I'm thinking we should wrap this up and stop. I don't. No, I know. I guess until... It's the right time. I don't know. At this point, like we've shared, this is a part of our week and precious time on our calendar. I know we have some exciting guests in the wings. Yeah. So there's certainly no shortage of conversations. It's not about content. I think originally we thought... What are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. But then when we started really sitting down thinking about things... And we have a whole Trello board of ideas and, you know, things that can be altered somewhat or need to be revisited. It's never about content. I think if we ran out of content, that would be a different conversation. Right. But it's not. We still have ideas throughout the week of episodes and our team comes to us with episode ideas. Sometimes we use the podcast as an opportunity to figure out what we think so we can train our team on ideas that need to come up or need to be discussed. So this podcast serves a purpose for us in terms of our leadership and our ability to share and figure out what we think about things. And, you know, it would feel empty. The answer is, I'm sure it'll stop someday. I don't know when that will be. Not anytime soon. No. I don't think so. No. Like you said, it it does really inform how you are leading both of your teams. Mm -hmm. I've seen episodes and then we're talking about it in our team meetings. It's like, yes, this is so applicable to what we're all dealing with right now. Thank you. Exactly. It's so wonderful every week. Exactly. Because sometimes I'll come up with an idea of something I know we need to discuss as a team. I'll come to Steph and I'm like, can we write an episode about it so we can figure out 
what we want to share. We don't always share everything we write down in the episode. We do save some of it's not appropriate and some of it's team specific, but I don't want to be spinning my wheels on my own trying to figure stuff out. For sure. So yeah, that's been a shift in the podcast is using it in that way. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Over the course of the podcast, what specific feedback or messages from listeners have meant the most to you? Because, you know, we get emails every week. We get messages that are sent. What are some of the, the most meaningful words that you've heard from people? For me, I hear it a lot when podcast listeners are calling the practice. Mm-hmm. Just how understood they feel. And I mean, I got an email yesterday from a family that's in the practice that started out as podcast listeners. And they're like, this whole process of figuring out what's going on with their learner has been so much smoother than it would have been without the podcast. So like, that is really meaningful. When we get people who write a review on Apple Podcasts, I do look, I do check it. I sent Steph one last night. Last night. Yeah. It means a lot. And if you're looking for a way to celebrate 300 with us, that's really one that means a lot. Yeah, please share. You know, honestly, when people I meet in real life that listen. That's going to be a surreal feeling. (laughs) You know my voice? And I just experienced it the other day. And it's meaningful. It throws me off, but it's meaningful. And it's almost like this is such part of our routine and whatnot that sometimes I forget. And then sometimes someone will say something and I'll go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, on the podcast. Oh, yeah, I did say that. Yeah, you know. (laughs) Remember I had a parent ask me about drapes in my house once and I was like, (laughs) how did you? (laughs) I had no memory of discussing it on the podcast. I'm like, but it had been an issue at one point. Definitely it's meaningful that people are taking time out of their day to listen. Absolutely. I love that. I want to add one more idea too, which we haven't talked about is like, how unexpected it was for us that we would create Learn Smarter Pro or do business coaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were actually quite clear that we weren't going to do something like that, that that wasn't the point. We evolved on that because that's what people wanted from us, which we weren't expecting. So that's been something that's meant a lot to me because it's kept things interesting for me and for staff. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of have to go with what the audience is wanting and who are we attracting as listeners. And that's just been the progression that's happened. Just awesome. Do you you have any special shout outs or words of gratitude for your listeners, supporters, or team members? Hint, hint. (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding. Listeners, supporters. What would you like to say? Yeah. We're going to sandwich this episode with with Katrina praise at the beginning and the end. Yeah. No. (laughs) I don't need it. You're constantly showing your appreciation. (laughs) We're just constantly trying to get Katrina to only have Apple products. That's really our life goal. 100%. The fact that our text messages are green. I mean, Steph wouldn't date you, Katrina, over that. 100%. Hey, I get that's a deal breaker. I mean, (laughs) we couldn't get the AirPods to work for recording this episode. (laughs) Is that because I don't have an Apple computer? Probably. Yeah. We're just going to start sending you gift cards, like for your birthday and for the holidays of like... Slowly accumulate up to the cost of it. But you were supposed to tell her that. We actually had already talked about that. (laughs) That's what you're getting from here on out. So happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy. (laughs) You know, we record at home. It's an intimate conversation between Steph and I. It's usually only her and I or her and I, one or maybe two other people. We forget that it's going to be heard. And so it means a lot to us when people listen to us and take us on their walks and take us on their drives and talk to us about the episode. So we're grateful for the audience. We're grateful for those OG people who have been with us since episode one. But like we always say, it's a lot of Rachel and Steph time. Mm-hmm. And I think it is a surprise to me that people listen <laughs> And we're grateful to peers. I mean, I don't know a lot of other podcasters who like have had the same editor since day one. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to you, Steph, that I don't have to do any of the tech stuff and Katrina. Like, I'm grateful that we're able to stay in our lanes a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and grateful to our Patreons that we've had. Oh, yeah. Grateful to our teams. Grateful to our guests. To the clients. I mean, sometimes the client session will inspire an episode and we usually ask permission and they're usually like, yes. Not that we're sharing their names or anything, but we would never want one of our clients to like hear an episode and hear a story that they think may be about them without them knowing. And so many people have said yes to this podcast in one way or another, whether it's by listening or being on it or emailing. It makes it meaningful for us. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy to think people have been with us as long as they have. If you are somebody that has listened to every episode. (laughs) We know that you're out there. You've told us, but email us. Email us. Oh, we would love to hear that. I would love to have a fantastic listeners of the podcast list. You may or may not get something in the mail. We have (laughs) stuff. Well, congratulations to both of you. 300 episodes is a huge, huge accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. And you both should be so proud of one another and yourselves. And thank you for pouring your heart into everything you do each week. You both are extremely fabulous people that I'm very grateful to know. And thank you for this opportunity. And thank you to Corey. Thank you to Corey for bringing us together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Corey interviewed you for, was it the 100th episode? I think so. Right. What did we do for 200? I think Pierce. But I don't know what we're going to do for 400. We might have to have someone else join the team. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We have a couple of years. <laughs> You know, I think Elliot, maybe. Oh, okay. Elliot will interview us. Yeah, we'll ask him what his favorite tracks are. Or he'll (laughs) ask us what our favorite tracks are. (laughs) I love that. I love that. All right. Well, have a great week, Smarties. Have a great week. Thank you, Smarties. And thank you, Rachel and Steph. Love you both. Love you, Katrina. Have a great week, Smarties. (laughs) 